Ruchem Aboyim, thank you for coming. Again, we are on the uh, Gematria series lectures. And today we'll be on number, actually two numbers, number 23, uh, Chaf Gimel, and number 24, Chaf Dalid. Um, so there is really, 23, there's really very little reference to the number Chaf Gimel, 23 in Tanakh, in the Torah. However, there is an allusion to it. Again, we see with Rivka, uh, the mother, second mother of the nation of Israel, and again, the wife of Yitzchak. She was married to Yitzchak and was barren for 10 years. Then at the age of 23, she gave birth to twins, Esav and Yaakov. That's one allusion. Now, the 23rd time the name Yisrael, which is named for Yaakov, is used in the book of Bereshit. For Yaakov, it's in the portion of Vayachi, uh, 47, chapter 47, verse number 31, where he instructs his son Yosef as to where to bury him after his death, again, which was a major um, request since he had buried his mother, Rachel, on the road. So he made it a point because he was asking Yosef to take him all the way from Egypt to Canaan, to Israel, to bury him in the Machpelah. And he thought that Yosef might have an issue since he had buried his mother on the road. Also, we break the number 23 into two numbers, 2 and 3. Then we do find an inference of 2 as twins and 3 being triplets in the Torah. Uh, the first murder in the world came about because Cain, the first, again, Cain and Hevel, the first two young men that were born, to Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. Uh, so Cain, the eldest, was born as twins with a twin sister. And Hevel, who was born the second, was born as triplets with two sisters. The first murder in the world occurred, it was over who would have that third sister who was born with Hevel. And they each claimed that she should be theirs. And again, this brought about the first murder in Torah. The next time we find an inference of twins and triplets, two and three, is with the 12 sons of Yaakov, uh, the tribes of Israel. According to the Medrash, all the brothers were born with twin sisters that they married. Only one, Binyamin, was born as triplets. Again, that may be the reason why when he meets Yosef, the viceroy in Egypt, he is uh, only 30 years old, and yet he has 10 sons more than any of the other brothers, even though he was the youngest of all of them. Now, the word ka'av, like a father, has a gematria of 23. May God treat us as a father, and even though we do not deserve it, may he bring Mashiach Tzikreni quickly and in our time. And that's a quick overview of the number 23. Continue now with the number 24. The number 24, Chaf Dalid, has many connections in Torah. Um, the Torah begins with God marrying off Adam and Eve. He was the uh, Sadr Kedushin. He was the one who married them. In fact, he was the one who brought Chava to Adam, Eve to Adam, and he gave her 24 gifts, which is an allusion to 24 gifts that are given to a kala to a bride. Now, there were 24 gifts that the Torah commands us to give to the priests, the Kohanim, from our fields, our animals, and even redeeming our firstborn sons. The families of the priests and the Levites were divided into 24 groups, referred to as the Mishmarot, watches, that served in the temple two weeks of the year. Now, all the families of the priests and the Levites served on the holidays. There were 24 watch stations that were in the temple. Now, corresponding to the division of the 24 groups of priests and Levites, there were 24 mamoshos, again, representatives, that served in the temple. Now, these mamoshos, these representatives, were made up of Israelites. Each represented his geographic area of residence, with the Holy Land divided into 24 districts. They were righteous individuals who represented the people at the temple service and served as witnesses to the daily sacrificial rites. Tanakh, a uh, word that we use as an acronym for Torah, Nevi'im, and Kesuvim. Torah, again, is the five books of the Torah. The prophets and the writings. Altogether, they consist of 24 books. These are the 24 holy books of the Torah, referred to as Tanakh. There are five books of the Torah, eight books of the prophets, and 11 books of the writings. 
Now, there were 24,000 men who died from the tribe of Shimon in the debacle in Shittim, who sinned, who were seduced with the Midianite woman, women, again, with the advice of Bilaam that was given to uh, Balak. Now, there were also 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva who died between the time of Pesach and Shavuot. In fact, they, uh, there was actually a, a connection between these two events, though they happened many years apart. The commentaries tells us that Rabbi Akiva was a Gilgal, was a reincarnation of Zimri, who was the prince of the tribe of Shimon, who was killed by Pinchas while having relations with Cosby, a Midianite princess. Now, the 24 students of Rabbi Akiva were also Gilgulim. They were reincarnations of 20, 24,000 men from the tribe of Shimon. Rabbi Akiva's second wife was a reincarnation of Cosby. When Haman came to take Mordechai for his reward for saving the king's life, Mordechai was teaching Torah to 24,000 children. Amazing that the Gadol Bador, the greatest man in the generation, see how important children are in Jewish um, philosophy and in ideologically. Now, the number 24 symbolizes abundance. It is, it is prime, in its prime, the city of Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, had 24 dream interpreters. Now, in Echel Rabbah, it states that there were 24 open palaces in Jerusalem. Each open place had 24 alleys. Each alley had 24 marketplaces. Each marketplace had 24 streets, and each street, 24 courtyards, and each courtyard had 24 houses. Again, signifying abundance with the number 24. Now, at the dedication of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, there were 24 bulls that were brought up as a peace offering, a shlomim, and placed on the altar on the Mizbeach. Now, the Mizbeach HaKatoris, which is the golden altar, where the incense was offered was one cubit why, why one cubit square. A cubit is six hand breaths. Four times six is 24. There were 24 rings to the north of the altar that were used in the slaughtering of the sacrificial animals. There were also eight pillars with three iron hooks. Three times eight is 24. They were used to hang and then flay the animals, the slaughtered animals. Again, they skinned them there. The number 24 also was linked to the members of the tribe of Levi. There are 24 times that Kohanim are called Levim, Levites. In Chronicles, Tevi in chapter 20, verses 6 and 7, it states that Yonachan, a nephew of King David, slew a giant that had six fingers and six toes on both his hands and feet. Six times, four times six, 24. It also mentions that Shmiah, who was Dovid Melch's br brother, during the Battle of Gath, also killed a giant that had six fingers and six toes on both his hands and his feet. Again, 24. As we all know, there are 24 hours in a day. And according to Jewish law, the day is divided into 24 hours called Shosamanios, hours of time, which were both day and night, Day and nighttime hours are, sub are divided, subdivided, into 12 equal parts. The length of a halachic hour during the daytime fluctuates between the winter and summer days. During the winter, when the daylight is shorter, an hour can be as short as 45 minutes. And during the summer, again, when the daylight is longer, a, an hour can be as long as 76 minutes. And every Jew has a responsibility to serve God. 24-7. When Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, was on his deathbed, he questioned whether his sons were true believers. When he was speaking to them again, the divinity, the Shekhinah left him. He was afraid this was because of a begam, a blemish in one of his sons. And they said to him, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Hero Israel, the Lord, is, uh, the Lord your God is the same God that we believe in. Referring to their father, Yisrael, and he replied to them, Baruch Shem Kavol Malchus Yolam Ved, blessed be his name forever and ever. And this verse, Baruch Shem Kavol Malchus, has 24 letters in it. When Moshe Rabbeinu, when Moses, our teacher, was in heaven to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai, he heard the angels utter these words, Baruch Shem, to God Almighty. We say this verse every day in our prayers, but we say it quietly. 
There's a medrash that says Moshe Benu stole it from the from the angels, so therefore we don't want them to know. Give the the example of a man who took a precious uh, necklace from the king, uh, stole it, and he told his wife, "You can wear it, but only in the house. Nobody should know that you have it." Uh, the only time we do say it out loud is on Yom Kippur, and the reason being, then we act like angels, and then it is said out loud for all to hear. This phrase was recited in the temple all the time in response to the hearing of the pronouncement of God's four-letter name of mercy, what we call the yud ke vav ke. Um, the Sefer Yitzhira states that frogs sing praise to God every day. And these are the words that they say. In fact, there's a very cute story of King David when he finished saying Tehillim, when he finished the book, that he felt very uh, proud of himself. And he uh, saw a frog, and the frog said that uh, you shouldn't be so proud. I praise God every moment of every day. And again, what a frog says to God is, Baruch Shem Kavol Malchuso, the Olam Vod. Again, frogs are very special in that uh, they're an acronym for forever rely upon God. On God, not upon, excuse me. Also, frogs only jump forward. They do not jump back. Again, a great lesson. Besides the fact that during the second plague in Egypt was again the frogs. And we know that Mishal Hanani and Azariah learned from the frogs because they jumped into the ovens. And those frogs that were willing to give up their lives did not die. So when the plague ended, all the frogs that had been everywhere else died. But those that went into the ovens actually survived. And again, so Michal Hanani and Azariah, seeing this, allowed themselves to be thrown into the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar, and they survived, again, learning from the frogs. Historically, there were 24 sins that were committed within the city of Jerusalem prior to the destruction of the first temple. These sins have their parallel in the 24 curses mentioned by Dovinamel, the psalmist, in Psalm 109. There were 24 questions that Ray Shlokich would ask Rabbi Yochanan. There are 24 chapters in the tractate of Shabbos. The word Shalom is found 24 times in the Torah. In the event of a drought, the rabbis would proclaim a fast day, special fast, and instead of the normal 18 blessings that we say in the Amidah, the standing prayer, they would insert 24 benedictions. The Gemara, the Talmud, and Psachim, 50, states that the men of the Great Assembly, the Yanshe Knesset Agdola, instituted 24 fasts for those scribes, Sofrim, who wrote mezuzahs and fillin, and again, holy books, Sfarim. The reason being so they would not get wealthy. These rabbis were concerned that if they were to get rich, then they may stop working. The male body has 24 tips of limbs, called Roshe Havarim. These are the 10 digits of the hand, Ten digits of the feet, two ears, nose, and the male organ. Damage to any one of these 24 bodily parts finds its application in the laws of a non-Jewish slave. If a master injures only the tip of one of these limbs, the law is the slave is automatically freed from servitude to compensate for his bodily damage. The Rambam states, that there are 24 situations that prevent a person from engaging in tshuva, in repentance. The concept of kapara, of atonement, is actually found in 24 occasions within the five books of the Torah. Now, in the weekly blessing in the Amida in Nusach Ashkenaz, we pray to God that he should rebuild the holy city of Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim Yer Kodesh. We should build it. The blessing is comprised of exactly 24 words. May these words come true with the coming of Mashiach quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming and have a great Shabbos.